Hi guys and welcome to another video on my channel. I know it's been a long time since I posted the last video and you know the life is not always how you plan it so happened lots of things that I didn't expect them. First of all the my boy is growing and I need to spend more time behind him. Now that he's running everywhere I need to look after him to don't hit his head everywhere and start pulling all the drawers and catch his fingers in the then also I was busy building this model railway for my son. He really likes to enjoy watching the train running around. And then the end of the year was not so great for me. I ended up also in the hospital. But now I feel better and without further ado, let's go to my working bench to see what we can do today. Okay, so let me bring this box over here where I have uh, pending projects. Because I have lots of projects that are going to come soon on my channel, as soon as I can have some time. So here we have a dual channel stereo amplifier kit. Then what we have in this small box? Small box we have some uh, pre-amplifiers, some capacitors, some potentiometers, some other pre-amplifiers here that I need to test them and see how they work let me get to the other boxes over here so in this box I believe we have another audio amplifier yeah another audio kit amplifier which I need to test also this one to build up and uh, see how that works what else we have here in this box we have another big PCB with a lot of components. Definitely same is an, uh, another audio amplifier. If I don't, I'm not wrong. Here, what we have in this box? Ah, we have the power supply for another audio amplifier. So yeah. So in this case, I have also this small kit here the same is an, is only one channel audio amplifier i get it from aliexpress in one mel big mel big video i'm gonna put it over there up here somewhere and have a look how much i pay on and uh, that's why i bought this one to build up and do a test to see if it's really how they claim that this one should deliver 100 watts but i don't i don't think so so that's why i'm gonna build this one we're gonna give a test a oscilloscope test as well see how that works and uh, we're gonna start from there okay so this is the audio amplifier kit which we are going to build today it's a small PCB that they claim that is uh, 100 watts over there you can see there but I doubt anyway here I can see there is not the value of the components mentioned on the PCB here are all the components that they are gonna go in this uh, kit and here they send me also this paper which they say where the value goes so for example the air one is 2.2k so I need just to find where is the air one over there and to make sure that I'm putting correctly and uh, thanks that on a website uh, them listing on aliexpress they have also this pcb board where already the components says the value over there so i can also double check this paper to make sure that i am putting the right components where they need so i'm gonna keep this paper in front of me over there when i build and here are those components which are few resistors some 5 watt resistors as well the power transistors some other few transistors small ones some capacitors and some diodes so let me set up here the soldering station and some soldering uh, wire and uh, flux and start uh, soldering all this stuff i'm gonna start first with the small resistors over there and then with the small diodes and i bring also my uh, tester to make sure that the resistor is the value that write it over here it looks like they they write it on the on the piece of paper there the value is this is 15k so if i take this one i'm gonna start 
straight away with this one to make sure it's uh, the right one. I'm gonna just chop a bit these ones there. Turn on this one and uh, try to see if it's the right value. So here we go, 15k, yeah, is the right one. So 15k according with this uh, paper, it will gonna be... Let's have a look, where is the 15k over here? 1k, 22, 15k is there. So 15k is according also with the paper. 15k, let's have a look. Where is the 15k? R9. So R9 is... R9 is there, so should be this one, which in the... See, they already did a mistake, because R9 is down here, and R9 is, says that it's 15k, but R9 is not 15k, because R9, according with this one, should be there. R8 is here, under the capacitor, so yeah, R8 is 15k, see? Better that I print out also this paper. So I'm gonna go with the paper. So 15k is telling me that should be there. So it should be there. The 15k. You already did a mistake over there on the paper. I can see. And if I was going just with the paper, if anything I was doing wrong. Okay, then R8 is this one here, R9. And for R8, if this one they say that is R9, so let's see for R8 what they say is. So where is R8? R1, R2, R3, 11, R4, R9, R5, R12, R6, R9. See? They did a mistake here. So yeah, good that I print also that one, because like that helping me a lot. So I'm gonna go maybe this time or the lapse time until I finish all the resistors and then we're gonna carry on with the, the other components. I put all the resistors over here and then I have uh, one which is R4 which is related to 560 ohm and the one that uh, the supplier provide me 
is 985 ohms so it's almost 1k it's far away from the 560 so another mistake from the supplier imagine no and then I look on my stock I couldn't find 560 I find the 510 which this one should be 510 So this is 511 and I have also another the 47 ohm so 47 ohm plus uh, 5, 510 it's almost 560 so if I have these two in series I'm gonna make a 560 ohm definitely yeah 47 ohm plus 511 I'm almost there so let me put in this one in series and insert over there let's go with all the diodes and all the diodes are the same and I test them already and are good are 1N4848 and they need to go the polarity so when you install them make sure that you follow the polarity which is the, that side the polarity and make sure that you put them on the right polarity otherwise uh, they can go wrong definitely if the polarity is not on the right direction so we have five of them which they need to go down there and we will gonna solder them so make sure the polarity because they have a black line on and it's also on the PCB board you're gonna see a line that's why it's good also to test the components even if it's a full set or full kit like this one I can see already with one resistor was uh, wrong and if you I was not testing the resistors to make sure if are correct I was soldering that one and then maybe if it's not working I was thinking why it doesn't work and that's why it doesn't work because sometimes the supplier supply the wrong resistor value now let's solder all these uh, diodes over there I'm gonna might put this one in this position is much easy for me to solder and we solder all of them four pieces five five uh, diodes it's not much much easy to solder when you are quite far away from the PCB with your eyes because you cannot see very well what you are doing in there let's chop off all these excess leads and here we go the diodes are also in I always like to keep them raised from the PCB in case if I need to change it's easy to catch them with the tweezers and desolder them over there now the next step I'm gonna say I'm gonna go the small capacitors oh, according with the PCB board which I printed off from uh, from the listing should be 104 104 104 
then a uh, few small here is one microfarad two to one over here and should be another two to one according with the how many capacitors i have here so where is the second two to one so here is two to one here is one microfarad then 104 104 104 and where is the other two to one I can't see it over here and also here I have oh, look C and C yeah 2 to 1 and 2 to 1 over there so I'm gonna test the these capacitors to make sure that are correctly so 2 to 1 this means should be 220 pico forwards so let's have a look yeah 226 pico forwards which is okay let's have a look the other one 212 pico parts, which is acceptable then this one should be the 100 nano forward so let's double check them yeah 106 next one 100 nano forward next one Uh, the leads doesn't want to go where they need to go so let's check again this one is 95 and the last one which is uh, the one microfarad let's have a look the one microfarad yeah one microfarad okay so let's put them over here so 105 104 i say that are those in the top over there so one there The second is there, the third is there, then let's uh, bend a bit these leads to don't fall down from the PCB. Then I say we have the two two ones, which are this one over here. And we have another over there where I say 2 to 1 is C6 over here hold on yeah it's that one and the one microfarad should be the input which is this one over here she goes down there and now I'm gonna solder them and we're gonna go with the other components so these small capacitors are all in over there as you can see so the next one i'm gonna go with the transistors i hope that they 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 put it on the right place because only the shape of the transistor i can follow that one there is not provided any schematics to understand where is going the collector and emitter and base but according with those one i'm gonna just put them on the right place how they design it and let's hope that everything will gonna work how should so i should have one two three four five six the small ones this one so four the small one and two big ones so two four six yeah so here down looks like all of them are the a733 so three of them so let's check the a733 so this is a7331 a7332 A733 the third place so this one is the 2N555 uh, should be that one there the 5551 so let's first put these three make sure that they are good ones so let's try to see so looks like this one is good and in one we have the emitter and number two is the collector and here is the base okay so this one is not like the bc ones that they have the base in the middle let's see the second one looks like it's the same and the last one looks like also this one it's okay so according with how they design it they should go like that in so i can go with one 
second one and third one and I'm going to solder them and then I'm gonna carry on with the other ones okay so these three are already here next I'm gonna try to see the 5551 let's see make sure if it's okay so this one yeah is a NPN and is the base on the middle each one is number two and this one according with the PCB should goes in in that position then we have these ones a bit uh, more high I'm pretty sure one is PNP and one is NPN so according with the paper over here I have the D667 and B647 so let's check the D667 so this is the four so this is the D667 so let's have a look if it's a PNP or NPN and this one it says that is a NPN and looks like the base is in a side and according with that one is this one here make sure again so it's gonna go there this one and this one let's double check to make sure also this one is correct should be a PMP this one definitely yeah it's a PNP and it goes in this side over there so I'm gonna solder also these ones and then we go also with the electrolytic capacitors so we have all the transistors in place now I'm gonna go with the electrolytic capacitors which are four of them 47 uh, microfarad at 50 volts are not the best for audio how you can see here are uh, this V E H T or who knows which brand are but anyway if it's the kit supply it I should look on my stock if I have better ones for audio but as I said this one is just a test is not for a build for me an amplifier in case if my work well maybe I can change the capacitor and make a nice amplifier but for now we're gonna go with what they provide so let's see the capacitors if are good it's taking a while I say 44 microfarads which are okay let's see the next one next one 45 which are close to 46 let's see the next one also Forty-six, and the last one, forty. Oh, this one is more. Well, anyway, whatever they provide, we're gonna use those ones. So here we have marked positive and negative. So let's put them on the right position. So positive is in that side, which goes like that. positive is in that side and goes like that where's the next one just exactly next to it and the last one is just down here Okay, I'm going to solder also this one and then we'll carry on with the power resistors and power transistors. So in the meantime, I also solder the connector for uh, output speaker, input signal and uh, power supply. Then I will gonna go now to solder the, the 5 watts resistors, which are these two. Sometimes, you know, these uh, 5 watts resistors are fake. I hope these one are the genuine one because I got also me sometimes the fake one which are was uh, inside a normal 0 0.5 resistor and then just use it this ceramic around to 
say that are 5 watts but actually they was just 0 point watt resistor so let's uh, give a solder also to these ones over here I should change the tip of this soldering iron with a, a bit of thicker one because in the points where you need where the trace is quite thick I struggle to solder I notice but anyway I'm gonna go like that how it is now so you can see here is quite thicker trace and it's struggle a bit to solder the the joint and let's apply a bit more because it's quite a big one okay let's also cut this excess wire for these resistors and now we get down to the power transistors so the power transistors is say that the C5200 goes there the, this kit it says that doesn't include the power uh, power transistors so that's why I went to my old stock I don't find the 52 and 1943 I find some equivalent like the C4468 and A1695 they should do well for this uh, this uh, amplifier just for testing so I'm going to solder them a bit rise up from the PCB board in order to to make sure that the CEC yeah, the CEC because it's PNP let's also test them to make sure are correctly so if I put them in over here I should have them on the right position okay let's have a look it should be a PMP the C no the C is NPN the A is PNP yeah so this one is NPN and the A should be the PNP transistor it's hard to match the the points there so let's have a look this is, should be the PMP yes this is the PMP so let's solder them in and uh, then we should set up the table to do some test to see if the amplifier working how should or no so for now i'm gonna not chop the wire i'm gonna solder them like that for test then i can easily put them in so maybe i can already put them in but i want to put them in a, a way that i can easily tight the screws on so maybe half of the pin so yeah let me solder in half of the pin so some place there so I'm gonna bend a bit this one like that this one like that and this one like that and they should be all right to be soldered in place let's go to solder only the center pin for now Maybe if I turn the PCB in this direction, it's going to be much easier for me, yeah. Okay. Now let me try to do the same also with the A. So, I'm going to go there. I'm definitely sure that they should go like that. As I say, I don't have any schematic and uh, I guess they designed it how it should be. In this way to go in in order that here is coming the PCB well we're gonna find out when we are going to do the test if it's all how should well, I did any mistake because the design how they design it is wrong so let's put there also this one just solder it for the now only the center pin to be straight on the PCB when I solder the other pins yeah they look so right now they looks also the same height and I can now put this one straight to be much easier if I need to get them out from the PCB to don't struggle right so now let's also solder all the pins I think I might need to ramp up a bit the heat over here because this one is a thick trace and definitely if I don't put more heat I'm gonna struggle to solder I 
a bit more on this pin because here they should handle quite high amps because it's is the power transistor that's why it's a power transistor to handle more amps and once it's soldered there a bit more on this one and we should be all right now let's cut the excess leads over here and here we go we should have a complete PCB with all the components solder in place and maybe it's time to try to put it on a heat sink apply power and see if it does what should so let's set up for that okay so here we go I already turned on my power supply it's a dual ray power supply which I built in a video I'm gonna put it over here and also a link down below so have a look to see how I build that dual ray power supply for making amplifiers, for testing amplifiers. I think this heat sink uh, is uh, quite enough. And there it says uh, on the listing that this board working from plus minus 10 volts up to plus minus 45 volts. So I set up my power supply with the dual 15. So you can see here I have plus 15, and I can see here I have minus 15 so a bit of jiggle maybe the positive rail a bit high just to go to 15 and it's gonna be yeah so now we have exactly the same so we're gonna I'm gonna connect it and first things what we need to measure because we don't know the schematic we don't know nothing well, I need to measure if I have any voltage on the output DC DC voltage okay so I turn on I connected so you can see this is the ground and this one is positive so I have 1498 over there and here I have minus 15 so maybe the positive uh, we can boost it a bit so let's boost a bit the positive with two millivolts more to do exactly 15 so let's measure again so I have 15 exactly and negative 15 exactly and this is the output let's see if we have any voltage on the output so I can see we have 0 0.016 millivolts for the DC offset if it's okay so we can definitely connect the speaker and see if uh, do any signal input. So let's uh, let's bring a, a speaker here and try to do also that one. And because uh, at 15 volts was working okay, was no even DC voltage output uh, on the speaker. I wrap up the voltage to 20 volts now, and now you can see I have a positive 20 rail and negative 20 rail. Here, speaker is already connected. Here nothing is getting hot and I have also connected the sound over here and let's play a, 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 a sound to see how that sound now let's play library audio
this amplifier I think sound really nice and uh, yeah there is no noise coming out and you can say now I stop it there is a bit of noise because these wires are not uh, screen it and then I don't have even any port to ground in order to stop the signal a bit from the to don't pick it up so sensitive so yeah guys thank you for watching this video we have a successful amplifier on the next episode we're gonna do some oscilloscope test and uh, we do some measurement to see the real power of this amplifier so stay tuned please subscribe activate notification bell like that you're gonna see the next episode when we're gonna do the testing with the oscilloscope and to see the real power of this amplifier until the next video guys have a good day and bye bye <music>